Chiefland, a town where sports and athletics are everything. Where the student athletes are considered hometown heroes. Chiefland High School, who already had two state championships in football, although having many successful seasons in baseball, was looking for their first state title. Even with a slew of talented players like Cedric Bowers, Cedric Bennett, Marcus Corbin, Brian Gore, and Avery Baker, they were never able to achieve the ultimate prize. Now with a group that was 10 and 10 the previous year and led by three returners, would seek to leave their mark on the Chiefland Indian Baseball Program. The expectations from around the community were low for this team, which makes how the season unfolded even more memorable. What do I think of 2013? First thing that probably comes to mind is underachieving. We got caught at the right time. 2013, uh, rough we'll start. We got hot and had a great run. Well, we underachieved big time in the beginning. We didn't take it serious. I remember exactly Coach Parnell and I having a conversation right before the season started. And we looked at each other and said, man, if we go 500 this year, we will be doing great. At the start of the season, the Indians found themselves not reaching their full potential. Midway through the season, they were one game over 500 and sitting third place in districts. Their hopes of making it to the playoffs was looking impossible. When you go through the games and you're just not playing good at all, not getting along really good. We were goofing off a lot. We'd go down to the batting cages and we cut up. We weren't really taking it serious. And unless there was somebody right there to watch over us, we just weren't really bought in. Losing to Baldwin definitely uh, kind of sparked um, something. It uh, we didn't, no one liked it. Losing to a subpar team like Baldwin was a wake-up call and helped transform this underachieving team's mindset. The Union County was definitely like the last straw. Um, we lost and nothing. Uh, that was the straw that broke the camel's back. It, it pushed everybody over the edge, we really, we really dove in and bought in to the process. Um, knew what we had to do at that point. And we just didn't want to lose anymore. Um, we're very competitive, that team was very competitive, but we just needed to take it serious and we finally did. After an embarrassing loss to Union County, the Indians went on an eight game winning streak and were able to bounce back to a 12 and seven record. Things started to click. Um, Started to have a lot more fun as a team. I, I believe that had a big impact on our performance on the field. And you know, once you you start taking things seriously, you start winning some games. One of the ways the Indians were able to get over the hump was not only working hard, but pulling together as a team. The sniper rifle, one of the most iconic things of the 2013 Chiefland Indian baseball team, hands down. That point, that moment was really when the team started clicking, when everybody was gelling in, because that's when we were not only taking the practice serious, the game serious, but we were also having fun. So I think the thing that really brought the 2013 team together was the invention of Vine. How was your game? Tonight. <laughs> I'm gonna for a little sneaky snack. <laughs> If you don't come to the game tomorrow, then you're getting the sword of death. We had one vine where one of us was sitting on the couch without a shirt on, and the other person threw a shirt at him, and it just like automatically went onto their body. We had to cut it at the right place to make it come together, but I thought that was really cool. Wash me, I bet you I can make it in that bucket. Every time. We were Vine superstars. Um, I had people from all over talking about our Vines. Um, 
played things in the back of the bus. Um, we were definitely the good time and kind of scene, always cutting up, making jokes. And I think that's what really surprised a lot of people when we came out there and won ball games that we weren't supposed to. And uh, it just made us really unique as a team because of our friendship with each other. If we don't think you're not going to land it, we'll catch you. They did not, uh, as you can tell. Um, I believe it landed on my neck. As the regular season winded down, there were a few more obstacles in their way. Their most hated rival, Trenton, and the district tournament. Uh, I remember Thursday night, it was the last practice before the Trenton game. Cornell got us together and kind of elaborated on how big this game could be. One huge game that we had was actually the last regular season game of the year. We were playing uh, Trenton. Trenton senior night. It was, uh, you know, game for myself and for the team. It was probably one of our best games that, that season. The whole season. Going to Trenton on their senior night. And uh, I remember them coming out and getting an early lead on us. It was 2-1. to one. And, you know, it just kind of felt like it was going in a direction that had already been before then. And we just kind of kept chipping away and they scored their runs early on in the first, second inning. And we just kept working and working and I think we were up four to two in the fifth inning. And then the, the bottom fell out of the game in the sixth. I remember Trevor Castell, freshman, hit a home run, just an absolute ball to the left field, right over their batting cages. And then once that happened, we just kept the gas on. We poured 10 runs on. One in at the six, the top of the six. With an amazing performance by Clayton Smith on the mound and some hot bats, the Indians embarrassed an undefeated Trenton on their home field, beating them 15 to two. This win allowed them to continue their win streak and gave them the momentum heading into the district tournament. Union County was like the number one seed, kind of projected to win it all, had a really good pitcher. Um, they ended up losing to Baldwin, and then we ended up playing Baldwin, um, which had a really good pitcher, and ended up beating them. We beat them 12-2, which was amazing, even at five innings. And um, that was just a great way to end districts. The Taylor Pearson game. It was the first game of the playoffs. Uh, we started Trevor. Trevor did what Trevor does. He dealt. Um, kept it a shutout game until I think the seventh. And then um, I actually made a not an error. I bobbled a ball that I should have threw the dude out at the plate. And they, they went up. And it was kind of that was kind of a gut check there for everybody. Like that was, we had an inning to score a run. And, First round playoffs, Taylor Pearson, uh, full count, two outs, runner on first. I remember being on my knees at the bucket praying because it, it, it looked out of sight. And probably one of the most unlikely things that could have happened sources based off of his appearance alone. Clayton Smith comes up there and just hits a dinger in the gap. I remember the guy got Clayton on the pitch and he was out on his front foot and it just left the bat and it went over the left footer's head. Aldridge scored from first, tied the game up and uh, I 
we were hyped. And then in the ninth, Colt got a, a hot fastball with a full count and hit it off the right field fence and scored the winning run. So that game as a whole was a, a significant moment. Um, there was many moments, you know, we thought it was over and some some senior stepped up, made some big plays that year. Taylor Pearson, we got to go play uh, the Villages. We won eight to one, and um, it was a big game. They were actually starting to get a little momentum, score a little bit later on in the game. There was a runner on third base, and the batter hit a deep pop fly to center field, and I immediately knew there was going to be a play at the plate. And a runner tried my cannon of an arm, so I had to unleash at least 104 home. And when Grayson caught it, I laid a tag as hard as I could, and. I felt a burning sensation in my palm. He actually broke his hand right here. And he actually played the rest of the season through the through the state tournament in a cast, which speaks to Grayson's toughness for sure and how big of a dog he was. One of my favorite memories from 2013 was when we won in the Villages, won the regional championship. I remember looking at my boy Cole and going, dude, we're going four Myers. We all arrived together that night and everybody wanted to see the field. So our kids run off the bus, get in the stadium, jump the fence, running around in the outfield, just like, you know, you could just see the joy and excitement that, you know, those kids were feeling from that moment um, that they knew, hey, we are here and this is a big deal. Today from JetBlue Park, the spring training home of the Boston Red Sox. It's the 2013 FHSA Baseball Finals. Today it's a Class 1A state semifinal between the Bucks of Bozeman of Panama City and the Indians of Chiefland High School. To play in Fort Myers for a chance to play for a state title was always a dream. Now these players were making it a reality. I was just nervous that we were about to come all this way for uh, the first sale in the playoffs. Um, coming into the Bozeman game after the prayer, I can remember uh, I didn't feel good. I was felt sick. 
I had my normal big game jitters, you know, butterflies, and I was nervous until after we took in and out. Playing on the biggest stage of their life, they will have to overcome their nerves. Two outs, that's a big strike out there for Castell. Fielding ground balls on a field that smooth, everything just feels right. I felt like I was prepared mentally and physically for that game, and I was amped up, ready to go. And um, I think my play, as long as the team's play, showed that we were we were ready for that one. How about the stretch there at first by Peyton Parnell, showing his athletic prowess there, four to three on the put out. Well, he has a, a pretty easy hitting there. One, two, three on a ground out to second. Chiefland principal Matt McClellan going to join me another half inning. We head to the bottom of the second. We are still scoreless here in Fort Myers. <laughs> it was. There's a base hit in the left field for Kyle Weeks.
James Corbin hit by a pitch, so runners at first and second with nobody out. Swing and a miss. About tip, they struck him out. Pop up the third, and the catch is made for out number two. Well, second and second of Indian uh, inning that the Indians have threatened. Still have a chance. They need a timely hit. There's Tim Reedy. And he's got a base hit in the left field, but they're going to have to hold the runner at third. That is three balls, two strikes, two outs. No room for Peyton Barnell. Base is loaded here at the bottom of the second. There you go. The Gates were going to the first ever softball final for the Columbia. Oh, the throw to center field, there's nobody there. Chiklin's going to score first, it's one to nothing. An error on the pitcher. And then taking second was Reedy. Put on the board first. Oh, settled. Yeah. settled my mind for sure. I think it's, but it settled everybody else's mind. Uh, and we started playing together. And there's ball four, so that will load them up for Trevor Castell. The 2 2 pinch. That one hit past the third baseman. Two runs are going to score on the play. Cheatland with a 3 0 lead. After a huge second inning, the Indians held on to a comfortable lead, 3-1, heading into the sixth inning, when Tim Reedy stepped up to bat. Reedy grounded out to the pitch for the first, single to left in the second, grounded out to short in the third. After six and two-thirds innings, the Indians were one out away from playing for their first state title. standing for the ballpark. We are two miles away. Okay. This is something, you know, that these kids will remember for a lifetime. No matter what happens, you know, this week, these kids will remember this forever. Um, you know, that year it didn't end the way we wanted it to, but I think that group was one of the groups that was very instrumental in really establishing a program at that point. Um, you know, so the other kids, that were here said, you know, hey, they did it, we can do it too. Uh, you know, growing, growing up, that team that made it to playoffs, we grew up together. We played 10 and under baseball. One of the state that uh, we played 12 and under. I mean, we've played throughout our whole entire Little League careers up to, to varsity level. Um, but yeah, it was, but that, that last two games, really set the bar for us. We were so popular for us. We were popular for us. We were so 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 popular for
experience. We went down there and watched a couple of them. The freshmen were fortunate enough to get brought up, play, do their part. outside of the fence and uh, it was neat. It was a cool experience. In 16 I was on the field. I, I played that year as my, my senior season. I went with the team. I was only in the seventh grade, so I was looking up to those guys. Two thousand thirteen experience that was um, very cool. Um, there were a lot of guys on that team who um, played the game right, played the game the right way, played hard, and. Um, I wanted to be just like that, just like that, play it just as hard as I could all the time. I always wanted to go back and play, play in the Final Four for myself um, and just take all that in. Number four, first baseman, Keegan. Oh, McClellan, and that is well over the head. This time, hit it over the head of Langlotz. My advice to future players in CHS is to just work your butt off. Not everybody's got God-given talent, but the one thing you can control is your work ethic, and your other teammates and your coaches will see that, and it's contagious. And uh, there's going to be a lot of good things that come from your hard work on and off the baseball field. The advice I give to a, a young player is just don't take it for granted. Um, if you're fortunate enough like to keep playing, it, it goes by quick and even like high school's even quicker. Um, one day you'll be a freshman, first day of practice in January or whenever, and you'll be just lacing your, your cleats up and then it'll be your senior year and you'll be putting them in a bag for the last time. One thing that Chad does that I love is the marble. Um, you get a marble every day and he's got a jar of them and it's symbolic of the days of the season and just work every day to get that marble. I know it sounds small but you want them. It, it just, it's just symbolic of not wasting a day. Don't ever waste a day. You're there, you're there to play baseball so play it well, respect it and have fun. something, you know, that these kids will remember for a lifetime. No matter what happens, you know, this week, these kids will remember this forever. Legacy doesn't live in trophy cases. It's woven in the very fabric of the jersey you wear. There's many years of blood, sweat, and tears in this program. It's witnessed greatness and its share of heartbreak. Chiefland Baseball is a living, breathing story. For a short, precious while, you and I get to be a part of it. So what mark will you leave? Putting on the blue and gold jersey is a commitment and it's a privilege. It's a privilege to sacrifice your time and your body to add something to the legacy.
to weave another story into the cloth. But with that privilege comes a debt to those that came before you and to those next in line. There are kids at Strickland Park and in backyards right now just waiting for a chance to be in your shoes. And one day, some of them will. Maybe then you'll look back and wish you were here just one more time. So don't waste it. Because however big, however important this feels for you, it's temporary. And with each new season, comes a clean page in the history book. This page is ours, and something will be written. Whether or not it's worth remembering is up to you. CHS Baseball is our legacy of selfless excellence. Energy is our creed. Today is all you get, so make it count. Make it memorable. Make it legendary.